turtles, from your leatherbacks to your loggerheads, are some of the most extraordinary reptiles living today. They're also possibly the most primitive, dating back more than 210 million years to the Triassic period. More than 300 species live all over the world and in almost every climate. But they have one amazing adaptation that sets them apart from all other modern reptiles. They have a shell. So how did the turtle get its shell? And what's inside it? The hard rounded carapace on the top and flat plastron on the bottom form a complete shell that surrounds a turtle's body like a suit of armour, leaving only a head, tail and four legs sticking out. But it's not as simple as just wrapping a normal reptile in a protective case because this suit of armour is made from the turtle's own skeleton. The shell itself is made of bone, specifically the rib cage, shoulder blades, collarbone, spine and breastbone that are modified so they can fuse into a solid impenetrable layer. In total, around 60 bones are flattened and fused to make the shell. And if you take all the squishy, fleshy parts of a turtle away, you're left with a surprisingly hollow vessel since there's very little of the skeleton that hasn't been fused to make this solid armour. And just as our skeletons grow as our bodies do, so does a turtle's shell. Newborn hatchlings emerge with small but perfectly formed shells. As they grow, new bone is added to keep the hard covering in one piece. In this way, some turtles, like the giant leatherback, frequently grow to be nearly two metres long and weigh more than half a tonne. But that's not all. Turtles also have their skin on the outside of their shell, along with the blood supply and nerve endings. This means that the reptile can feel anything that touches the outside of its shell, from the smallest tickle to the pain of a broken bone. In most cases though, this sensitive skin is covered by another series of hardened plates called scutes that give the outside of the shell its colour and texture. The scutes are made from a protein called keratin, that's the same stuff that makes up our fingers fingernails. And like the bones, they increase in size as the turtle grows, adding new layers to the bottom while upper layers are shed. In fact, some turtles make special trips to underwater spas to help this shedding process. Adopting a special posture, smaller fish can pick off old scoots and give the turtle the equivalent of a luxurious manicure. So with their skeleton and skin all involved in creating their hard shell, all that's left to fill the body cavity is the usual assortment of organs, including the heart, stomach, intestines and muscles. But when it comes to breathing, turtles need to do something a little bit differently. When we breathe, we use our intercostal muscles attached to our ribs to expand and contract the chest cavity, allowing air to be sucked into our lungs and pushed back out. This is the way it works with most reptiles too, but in turtles, the ribs are few solid, so the chest cavity itself can't change much in size. Instead, muscles inside the body put in a lot of effort to help to bring in air through the mouth. But sometimes even that's not enough. A few species, like the North American Eastern Painted Turtle, are able to breathe through their butts. It's actually their cloaca, an all-purpose opening that all reptiles urinate, excrete and lay their eggs through. Certain turtles also have sacs next to the cloaca called bursa, which can easily fill with water when the cloaca is opened. Oxygen diffuses from the sacs into nearby blood vessels before the water is squeezed out again. It's an efficient way of getting oxygen into the body, even if it is slightly gross. So if having a shell means that you have to breathe through your back end, why do it at all? The turtles first got their shells over 200 million years ago and have been pretty much unchanged ever since. But scientists think that it evolved as an adaptation to digging, giving the primitive reptiles bodies protection when they burrowed underground. But something that evolved as protection underground also gave protection in the open water. With an impenetrable skeleton on the outside, the turtles' delicate internal organs are effectively protected against the piercing teeth of predators. Today, it takes the bite of a ferocious tiger shark to get to the insides of a green turtle. 
So contrary to what the cartoons may have told you, you can't just pluck a turtle naked out of its shell any more than you can pull our skin off our skeleton. For them, their shells are just one of nature's crazy adaptations to help them stay alive. And they seem to be doing a pretty good job so far. If you enjoyed this turtly cool video, be sure to check out some more great content about our blue planet on the BBC Earth family of YouTube channels. Give us a like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.